Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rakha Ray, and I'm the chair of the Center for South Asia Studies. And I'd like to welcome you all to the first Maharaj Call Memorial Lecture. But before I introduce the speaker today, I'd like to say a few words about the man for whom the series is named. A PhD in civil engineering from the University of California, Berkeley, scientist, mathematician, anti-war activist, and a man I was proud to call my friend, Maharaj Paul. Maharaj was born in Kashmir and was a superb student, and he came to the US in 1965. Once here, he obtained an MS degree in engineering from SUNY Stony Brook in 1967, and a PhD in civil engineering from the University of California, Berkeley in 1972. And he spent the rest of his life until he retired working with General Electric. But brilliant engineer though he was, his real passion was for social justice. Indeed, he founded more organizations than anyone I know. He was the driving and sort of uniting force for progressive South Asians in the Bay Area. He started early at the University of California, Berkeley. He founded the South Asian Students Association in the late 60s. And he was the co-editor of its monthly publication, Spark. He co-founded South Asians for Collective Action, Coalition Against Communalism, uh, that was after the destruction of the Babri Masjid, India Relief and Education Fund, and he was one of the founder members of the Gadar Heritage Foundation. Indeed, it seems that Maharaj was a troublemaker from a very, very early age. Um, he always fighting for the rights of others, whether it's, it was for the right of his sister to play cricket, though everybody else said that she was a girl and wasn't allowed to play cricket. He was the one who taught her the rules of the game and said that she could play. Or, my favorite example of early Maharaj uh, radicalness was when he confronted his college principal in Srinagar, who, even in post-independence India, tried to declare a campus holiday in honor of Queen Victoria. <laughs> so he, he sort of opposed that. And apparently he managed to get the, the principal um, to leave India. Now, it's hard to actually underestimate the effect of, or, or to overestimate rather, the effect that Maharaj really had um, in the 1990s, this was a very difficult decade, I think, for many South Asians, particularly with different types of communal violence, and Maharaj kept us all together, um, raising funds, getting speakers, um, uh, bringing documentary filmmakers who'd made films on communal violence, sort of really uh, to raise the awareness level of not only South Asians in the Bay Area, um, because a lot of funding for right-wing uh, groups in India was going from here. So Maharaj really did what he could to try uh, to stop that and urged us all to do the same. If I could just uh, say a thing or two uh, personally. I was in India when Maharaj rapidly got sick and died. And I never really got a chance to say all those things to him that you really don't, but that I wish I had. I wish I had told him that I thought that he had almost single-handedly propped up secular and progressive politics amongst Bay Area Indians in the 1990s. I would have liked to have told him that when I arrived in Berkeley in 1993, a new assistant professor, anxious about being, coming to a new community and being part of a sort of uh, a community of like-minded people, his passion for justice, together with his sweet welcoming smile, filled me with relief that I would not be alone. And indeed, my Bay Area friends outside of the university are primarily those I met through Maharaj. I would like to have thanked him for turning his home into a place where political and social debate flourished and raged for hours and for cooking Kashmiri food for us to eat while, he, while we debated. And finally, I wish that I had told him about all the activists, journalists, filmmakers, and fighters for justice I have met over the years who looked up to him as a compassionate, dedicated, and brilliant organizer, and who never let them down. Many of the events we organized through the 90s and early 2000s 
um, reorganized at the Center for South Asia Studies happened because of Maharaj. He was always emailing me with a filmmaker, a speaker, um, a, 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 a progressive musician, you know, whom we should bring to Berkeley and that the Berkeley students and, and the Berkeley community should be exposed to. So it's particularly fitting that through a generous, generous donation from Maharaj's family, we will be able to honor him with a lecture in his name every year. But in addition to this, we'll also be able to fund students who wish to go to India to do internships or to work on development and other issues close to Maharaj's heart. For this generous gift to Berkeley, in Maharaj's memory, I thank his family who are with us here today. And now, I turn to introduce our speaker, P. Sainath, who was also first brought to Berkeley by Maharaj, and like Maharaj, an indefatigable troublemaker. For his stories, photo essays, and other work, recording an India seldom visible to many of us, P. Sainath was honored by, uh, with the 2007 Magsaysay Prize, which sort of recognizes and honors individuals and organizations in Asia who have not only achieved distinction in their respective fields, but who have really generously reached out and helped others um, so without anticipating public recognition. He has also received the Burma Journalism Prize from the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, the BD Goenka Prize um, for Excellence in Journalism, and the Prem Bhatia Journalism Award. He was the first journalist in the world to win Amnesty International's um, Global Human Rights Journalism Prize in its inaugural year in, in 2000. Now, Sainath also began causing trouble early, certainly at uh, Jawaharlal Nehru University when he was a full-fledged activist. He uh, completed a master's degree and then became a journalist. In 1993, um, Sainath applied for a Times of India fellowship to report on rural India. And at that time, and the editor apparently asked him, Suppose I tell you that my readers aren't interested in this stuff, on rural India, that is. Sainath apparently responded, when did you last meet your readers, that you can make any claims on their behalf? Well, he got the fellowship and took to the back roads in the 10 poorest districts of five states. And, and he covered close to 100,000 kilometers across India using 16 forms of transportation including walking 5,000 kilometers on foot. The result was the immensely powerful and important Everybody Loves a Good Drought, which I think that many of you are actually familiar with. And in this book, Sainath argued that the acute misery of India's poorest districts was not caused by drought, as the government insisted, but rather it was rooted in India's enduring structural inequalities, in poverty, illiteracy, and caste discrimination, exacerbated by economic reforms favoring foreign investment and privatization. Through his work, Sainath exposed the shocking rise in suicides amongst India's debt-pressed uh, farmers. And at a time when officials boasted of a national grain surplus, he reminded us that 250 million Indians were suffering from endemic hunger. By bringing these the other such facts that we don't want to notice, to our attention, he has indeed become the conscience of the Indian nation. At present, Sainath is the rural affairs editor for The Hindu. In describing Sainath's work, University of California journalist, journalism um, lecturer Khan Hallinan says, he does the kind of reporting American journalists only think about doing. I don't know anybody who is better at it. Few journalists anywhere at all do this work today. And so we are delighted to have him speaking to us today about democracy and media. The topic of his lecture, Pay to Print, How Media Corruption Undermines Indian Democracy. Please join me in welcoming P. Sainath, our inaugural Maharaj Kaur Memorial Speaker. Thank you very much, Raka. I, <clears throat> it goes without saying that I'm deeply honored to be the inaugural speaker in the Maharaj Call series. 
I cannot say that I'm delighted to be doing it. This is the first time I'm speaking in California and Maharaj Kaul is not present in the audience. I think 90% of the talks I've done in California were organized by him. And it's, uh, I also think, I, I cannot uh, remember how many different cities and towns he drove me to in this state to make me speak at places I'd never heard of, like Pittsburgh, California, and to Yuba City and Sacramento. And at any given time when you landed at Maharaj's house, there were a half a dozen people like myself all over the place, you know, on the sofas, on the beds, and Maharaj cooking for everybody, that fabulous Kashmiri cooking. And uh, I suspect that the last time, in late 2008, when he drove me around a hell of a lot of places, I suspect he knew he was not well. In fact, I suspect he knew and deliberately did not tell a lot of us. That till, till the very end, when he called Amrik and where what he simply did not tell us. I, in fact, remember him uh, not seeing me for a couple of days, saying he had some medical tests, and I asked him, how did the medical tests go? He said, oh, it's all routine stuff here, insurance and all that kind of stuff. One has to do that. Le less than 12 months from then, we knew what those medical tests must have been. So it's very, it, it's really something for me to be speaking here and not have Maharaj in the audience, but I'm deeply honored that his family are here. Thank you for that. <laughs>